This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex concepts simply for 20% off by being one of the first 200 to sign up at brilliant.org slash real life lore. Macau is a tiny peninsula with some islands that's located in the south of China, but it's not really China. While you might not see any difference on a map between the two, Macau has its own independent government, its own money, its own police, and if you cross from mainland China into Macau or from Macau into mainland China, you'll need to go through customs and get your passport stamped. This is because Macau is one of two special administrative regions, or SARs, of China, the other being nearby Hong Kong across the bay. Both Hong Kong and Macau are largely independent, autonomous regions that operate their own local governments with minimal interference from Beijing. And while Hong Kong largely steals the spotlight from her sister, what with a Disneyland, huge skyscrapers with millions of people, and massive protests, Macau is just as loud, but in a different kind of way. You see, gambling in all forms is illegal across the entirety of the People's Republic of China, meaning that it is illegal for 1.4 billion people, or over 18% of the world's population to partake in the practice. However, since Hong Kong and Macau have different rules and governments, the laws are different. Hong Kong has some limited betting on horse races and lotteries, but it doesn't have any casinos. Macau, on the other hand, has gone crazy with casinos and you can find 38 of them to choose from today dotted across the tiny territory. Tiny Macau is the only place in China where you can legally gamble inside of casinos. But Macau's unique situation extends far beyond beyond only China. Extend the map out and you can see that casino gambling is also illegal in nearby areas like Vietnam, Taiwan, and Japan, while only two casinos exist in the entire country of South Korea. The concentration of 38 casinos in such a tiny area is unprecedented in East Asia, and it's part of why Macau could be considered the most internationally visited city in the world. If you count mainland Chinese and Hong Kong tourists visiting Macau as foreign arrivals, which you might because they do need a passport in order to get in, Macau easily becomes the most internationally visited city in the world with nearly 31 million people visiting in 2016 alone, or nearly 85,000 people every day. Macau only has a population of 653,000 people living there, which, in the tiny space that it occupies, already makes it the most densely populated administrative region of the entire world. But with the amount of visitors coming in, it means that on any given day, one out of every 10 people that you see in the city is an international tourist. Macau, as a small city, generates more dollars in tourism revenue than the entire country of Japan does, and its gambling industry is seven times larger than the Las Vegas economy. Macau is indisputably the largest and most profitable gambling center in the world, but the story behind how it became this way is both long and fascinating. The area of modern-day Macau was probably always sparsely inhabited until the Portuguese randomly showed up in the 1500s. They basically used a big pile of money to bribe a local official into giving them a lease of the Macau Peninsula, and they even began renting the area from the Chinese government every year until things started getting weird in the 1800s. The British showed up into the picture and began taking over Hong Kong on the other side of the bay and getting millions of Chinese people addicted to opium to make some money. China at the time was like a heavyweight boxer long past his prime that was weak and addicted to drugs. And sensing blood in the water, the Portuguese just started refusing to pay the rent for Macau and negotiated with the Qing Dynasty in 1887 for permanent rights to occupy Macau in perpetuity. Since Macau's importance as a trading port had begun diminishing following the British takeover of Hong Kong, the Portuguese decided to legalize gambling in their territory as a way to increase the local government's revenue. Things were pretty simple for a while, with the only gambling consisting of traditional Chinese fontan houses that paid a license fee to operate to the government. But things started heating up in the 1930s when Macau granted monopoly rights to the entire gambling industry to the Tai Hang Company. But they really sucked and they didn't really do a whole lot with that and oh whoops now we're in World War II and Japan has begun taking a rude unwelcome vacation in China with millions of soldiers. But the Japanese were much less rude to Macau and respected the tiny Portuguese peninsula without ever attacking or occupying it. 
Macau kind of became known as a safe haven during the war, and it especially became one afterwards, when China couldn't decide who the real China was, and millions more people died because of that. Refugees flooded into Macau, and with a new, massive workforce, the economy began booming. The 1960s came around, and Macau decided to grant the monopoly gambling rights again to a different company that hopefully wouldn't suck as much this time called STDM. Which stands for this, but yeah, I don't speak Brazilian very well. Anyway, STDM introduced Western-style casino games into Macau for the first time and invested heavily into modernizing the marine transportation between Hong Kong and Macau so that the millions of Hong Kongers could easily begin gambling inside of Macau. Everything was great until the old problems of their being multiple Chinas came up once again in the 1990s. The UK gave Hong Kong back to China in 1997 because they signed a treaty back in 1898 that they'd give it back in 99 years from then. 99 years came and went, and the British peacefully agreed to transfer it back to Chinese rule. The Portuguese argued that the treaty they had signed with Qing China enabled them to keep Macau forever, but the People's Republic of China wasn't exactly in a listening kind of mood, and with a population a bajillion times bigger than Portugal's, with millions of soldiers and with a very unsympathetic United Nations, Portugal never really had a choice, and they too peacefully transferred Macau back over to China in 1999. China, however, agreed not to interfere in Macau's gambling policy, and true to their word, the Macau gambling economy has actually exploded in the years following the transfer. The STDM monopoly was ended in 2002, and since then, multiple new foreign casino companies have begun operating in the territory and increasing competition. By 2007, the Macau gambling revenues overtook Las Vegas to become the most profitable gambling center in the entire world, and Macau's tourism industry is among the largest in the world. World. But Macau's heavy reliance on the gambling industry does bring certain problems. As of this moment in 2019, taxes on the gambling industry make up a whopping 70% of Macau's government income. The gambling industry is heavily reliant on the prosperity of the people who actually gamble. Recessions mean less money to travel there and less money to gamble there, meaning that a future recession in either China or Hong Kong or both, which account for 87% percent of all the tourism in Macau would severely negatively impact the Macau economy. Further, it's unclear what China's intentions are for the future of the territory. China agreed to respect both Hong Kong's and Macau's territorial sovereignty for a period of only 50 years. So until 2047 for Hong Kong, and until 2049 for Macau. By that time, the world's largest gambling center could be at a risk of ending, or maybe not, but only China knows. Less than 200,000 Americans visited Macau last year, while tens of millions of them visited Las Vegas. Either way, if you're planning on visiting a casino or gambling and you want to actually win money, it helps to know how to actually play the games there, what to do in specific scenarios, and what your chances are at actually winning after you're dealt a certain hand. You need to learn and understand the principles behind the casino games if you want to stand a good chance. And that's exactly what brings Brilliant.org allows you to do in their Games of Chance course, where you can find entire sections on mastering blackjack, mastering casino craps, and how to calculate bets while playing roulette, among other things. Math is naturally confusing to me, but what I love most about Brilliant is the way that they make super complex topics like that easy to understand even for beginners, like the math that goes behind something like blackjack. They make difficult sounding subjects easy to understand for anybody, and you can try Brilliant out for free right now by signing up at the link in the description or by going to brilliant.org slash real life lore. To access their full catalog of courses though, you can sign up for their premium subscription for 20% off right now by being one of the first 200 to sign up also at brilliant.org slash real life lore. So go ahead and learn how to play casinos properly or how to dunk on your friends at poker nights. And as always, I'll see you next week for another new video then.